What's up guys, Zorgo Vlogs here and welcome to Super Reese Galaxy Audiobook Part 38A. So last time we got to the part where we were going to start on Clearwater Castle and this time you're going to get started. So with that said and done, let's go ahead and get started. Super Reese Galaxy Part 38. We were trying to get in the castle and then we started to panic because we couldn't get in. Hold on one sec. Reese, guys, the castle is locked. There's no way in. Malik, of course it's locked. Do you really think they would just leave it unlocked? Tia, I mean, you do have a point, Malik. I'm pretty sure they are expecting us. I mean, yeah, probably. But what are you supposed to do about this? Reese, in most games and cartoons, the people just walk straight in. Malik, Reese, what do you think we should do? Reese, we should see if there is an entrance in the purple water. Malik, Reese, that water is poisonous. Reese, that water's not that water is not poisonous, but it, it just looks that way. In fact, I'll jump into the water. Back to Reese talking. I jumped into the purple water and showed everyone that I was I showed everyone I was still alive. Everyone jumped in the water and we swam down to push a red button. After we pushed the button, an underwater door came open. All of us entered and the door pushed us up to the entrance of the castle. The castle reminded me of Castle Black from Super Paper Mario. The castle was black but had other colors too. However, I knew this would be a very serious area. There were a bunch of snakes that tried to bite us that, was very, that were very scary. Also a bunch of foreign creatures none of us saw before. The castle was going smoothly at some points, but we were always paranoid about what was going to be next. It didn't take long for Clearwater and whoever else runs this castle to stop with trying to scare us. Next thing I knew, they were putting math equations out to stall us. Basically, if we got the question correct, we would go to the next room. But if we got it wrong, then we would be sent to the entrance of the castle. We had questions along the lines of, what is 46 to the power of 43 modulo 7 equal to? We had no way of knowing what the answer was, and we were just guessing. We kept having to repeat the process of entering the castle and doing similar problems with different numbers. However, I figured out what we had to do when we finally reached that room for the ninth time. Let me explain how I solved the first problem. The first question was this. What is 72 to the power of 29 modulo 5? Basically, the question is asking this. If we take 72 to the power of 29 and divide that number by 5, then what will the remainder be? The first step is find the highest multiple 5 that comes before 72, which is 70. Now we chop off 70 to the 29, and we're now solving for 2 to the power of 29 mod 5. Now this is where Sherwin's spoke theorem comes in. Sherwin's spoke theorem is the idea that when doing modulo questions that you want to land on the first spoke of the wheel as is as, is, as it is said. In other words, you want to figure out 2 to what power is equal to a number that will have a remainder of one. It sounds complicated, but let me show you an example. So we have two to the 29 modulo five. Two to the power of four is 16. 16 modulo five is one. Using Sherwin's spoke theorem with the mod five system tells us this. Two to the 29 mod five equals two to the fourth, and then that is raised to the power of seven times two mod five. Because, okay, so times two, let me explain. So if I have two to the four, that would be basically, so two to the four, and then that to the seventh is two to the 28th. Whenever you, whenever you double something when you're in a base two, that is basically two to the one. So when you're multiplying exponents, you generally add them. But if it's like parentheses, or it's like two to the fourth, raise the seventh as two to the 28th. Sherwin's spoke theorem makes 2 to the 4th equal to 1. 1 to the power of any number is 1. So we now have 1 to the 7 times 2. 2 mod 5 is 2, so our answer is 2. 
definitely a lot of work for a math problem and explaining, but once you learn it, then, then you realize it's so much easier and faster than the work that they make the Cheeseburger Kingdom students do in Algebra 1. The other problem we did was 41 to the power 56 mod 8. Taking it down to 1 to the power 56 made it to where the answer was 1. We had to do a few more problems like this, but we were crushing these easily. After completing a set of these, we had another empty hallway. At this point, we knew the castle would be a breeze. We opened up another door and we saw some red slings. Reese, what are these? Amelia, I don't know. Tia, Reese, I have never seen these before in my life. Malik, these are called sherry slings. A sherry sling takes you through walls. On sherry slings, if you are not changing your height, you will use the Savani sling formula to calculate distance. If you are changing your height, you will use the Alyssa sling formula. Sherry slings will always make you go through a wall. To reverse your way out of a wall, that'll mean that you have to use the official sherry sling formula, which is this. 1 over a squared plus 1 over b cubed is equal to 1 over c to the fourth. Tia, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't doing none of that math. Amelia, me either. Back to Reese talking. Malik, said, Malik suggested that we probably should do the math, but everyone else thought it was no need. We went on to use the sherry slings. Sure enough, we were all, we were all on a wall. Well, a room inside of a wall. No one wanted to do any math, so we just kept on going. We used another sherry sling, and we got into another wall, which took us to another room. I wanted to do some math, but I didn't have any paper. All of us kept choosing not to do math until we were 12 walls in. Malik, guys, we need to use the sherry sling formula and get out of here. Tia, man, I don't want to do that. Malik, I'm serious, Tia. Tia, okay. Back to Reese talking. Tia and Amelia were feeling adventurous with this whole puzzle. But Malik with us, he has the courage to tell the group that we need to get serious. Malik is a really good leader. He always thinks of solutions in a state of pressure and has a lot of street smarts. Luckily, to reverse, we only need to know the distance of two of the other sherry slings. One was three feet away, and the other was five feet away. The answer we had to type in, because in sherry slings, you actually type stuff in for the third sling that's outside of the wall. Like, that's the whole thing. The answer we had to type in was the fourth root of 1,125 divided by the fourth root of 134. The math was obnoxious. Still not as obnoxious as obnoxious as some algebra problems. Who am I kidding? It, it was way worse than that. By the time we had reversed our way back to where we were, we decided We decided we would try and hit the wall with the blue stripe on it. When we did this, we hit an Irma wall. An Irma wall. So basically the blue stripe is the Irma wall. When we did this, we hit an Irma wall. An Irma wall signals that you are going the right way. However, you will reach a dead end in the wall. If you do not use the sherry sling formula, or if you do, then you'll end up back at where you were before going into the Irma wall. However, to advance out of an Irma wall to go to the next area, you must use the super sherry sling formula. The formula is 1 over a cubed plus 1 over b cubed plus 1 over c cubed is equal to d squared. So anyway, this is Largo Vlogs, and that is the end of Super Reese Galaxy Part 38A. In the next part, we will be doing Super Reese Galaxy Part 38B. Anyway, it's Largo Vlogs, and I'll see you guys next time.